So hello, everyone out there, public housing authorities across America. Really appreciate you tuning into this uh, segment. And I'm here today with Michael Stratmanis, who is with the White House Office of Public Engagement. And first of all, I want to ask, what is the Office of Public Engagement? Uh, that's, a, that's a great <laughs> question. Um, I, feel, I know everybody feels like they have the best job at the White House. Okay. Uh, but I feel like I have the best job at the White House because the Office of Public Engagement is really the front door mm -hmm. of the White House. It's the place where we communicate with uh, constituents, we communicate with citizens. Um, in any way they want to participate in the public debate, we have a, a way to meet them. So we bring people into the White House to have conversations for them to weigh in mm -hmm. on policy issues. Um, we try to get out of the White House and go talk to them. Uh, we use all the social media tools, Twitter, Facebook, uh, you name it, mm -hmm. we try to do it because uh, we really are, uh, have the privilege to put the president's philosophy about governing into action, which is that uh, change and uh, the best ideas come from the bottom up. Okay. And we're the place that receives those ideas. Okay. It's a great job. So you're talking about the president's ideas and fatherhood is clearly one of those ideas. We actually have a video where we, we've spliced the president's address from last year on mm -hmm. fathers into this video. Can you talk to us a little bit about President Obama and fatherhood? Sure. Well, I, I um, am privileged to have had a little bit of a front row seat okay. um, to this work. Uh, you know, the president uh, and I have known each other for about 20 years now. Oh. Um, and so uh, we knew each other before we were fathers. Mm -hmm. And, okay. uh, and so we were, uh, we were friends, uh, he and, and myself and the first lady and my wife. Uh, and so we shared things like the births uh, mm -hmm. of our children. And uh, we've talked about the challenges that come along the way. Um, uh, you know, obviously he has two girls. Uh, I have three children, two boys and a girl. Uh, I've told him a little bit about boys. Uh, he's prepared me a little <laughs> bit for, uh, for, for little girls. Right. And so uh, I, 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 the bottom line is that this is, uh, this is personal for him. Right. It's not just a policy issue. Uh, it's something that's very important to him as a dad. Uh, also, uh, he grew up without a father in his life, and so he knows what kind of hole mm -hmm. that can leave uh, in a child's life, and, and a hole that, frankly, government has a role uh, to fill, but also uh, our community has a role to fill. And, uh, and we've tried to work hard as he has participated in public life, as he has been in elected office all the way to the President of the United States to put that work into practice and to try to do everything we can to make a difference uh, on this issue of fatherhood. Right. Well, you know, the, the phenomena in public housing, and my housing authorities know this, and, and I'm sure you know this, is that around public housing developments, there's a lot of guys, but the guys are not necessarily on the lease. The guys are not legal. Right. So therefore, they can't get services and they can't get connected as well as they want to with their family. Right. So can you talk a little bit about that, that gap and what that gap might mean and how we can start filling that gap? Sure. It, well, it's an important issue. Right. Um, you know, my parents met when they were uh, elementary school teachers uh, at Cabrini Green, one really? of the more notorious housing projects in Chicago. And so uh, being around that neighborhood mm -hmm. and being around that school, uh, even then I saw a lot of, of what you're talking about. And obviously, as we spoke about earlier, I grew up and came up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've seen that throughout my childhood and my adult life. And uh, you're right, there are a lot of men present. And I think that what we need to do is we need to uh, first do no harm as a government. Right. We need to make sure we're not creating barriers that make it more difficult for those fathers who want to get involved in their children's lives uh, to get involved in those children's lives. I think uh, one of the things that we want to make sure of is uh, if it's uh, uh, if it's if everybody's going to be safe mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. secure, mm -hmm. uh, then we need to find a way to provide pathways for dads to get involved with their children. Uh, and uh, you know, everyone, as we've talked to about this issue, women's groups, uh, housing policy groups, those who are advocating for public housing residents, mm -hmm. those who are working with dads, those who are working with single moms. And those who are working with those children, whether, it, whether it's uh, the guardian ad litems, uh, people in the, uh, in the public housing system, right. or those who are just trying to 
work with those children and provide services to them. Everybody knows that things are better when the dad is involved in the, in the, in the, in the children's lives. And so anything that we can do to impact this issue, uh, it's good for the uh, place where people are right. living, it's good for our society, and it's good for the children. That's great. You know, we had uh, Ron Warren, who's head of the yes. National Fatherhood Initiative. He was on, and he talked about the price you pay for absent fathers right. for the kids, right? Yes. So we want to make sure that Father's Day, Father's Day is an event, but we want to keep going after Father's Day Good. and do some things. So walk your child back to school and perhaps volunteer on Martin Luther King Day. Yes. Are you all engaged in something like that? And can we work together on, on some of those issues, some of those days? You know, we, we uh, need to make this a, a year of, of strong families uh, and strong communities. Uh, and so in order to do that, uh, we need to talk about fatherhood all throughout the year. And so uh, we're looking forward to working with you on this issue. Um, we want to use fatherhood really as the kickoff uh, to launch a series of partnerships to make it easier mm -hmm. for dads to connect with their children. Uh, sometimes the barrier is time. You know, uh, uh, this is not something that is strictly for uh, low-income dads or right. dads who are struggling with a, a whole host of issues. There are middle-class dads who, in our uh, economy, are working harder, working longer. The moms are working longer. And we need to find a pathway for them to spend time with their children. So we're having partnerships with things like the zoos that will make it easier for a dad mm -hmm. to go take their child to the zoo. Right. Um, but we also have a lot of dads who are struggling with, uh, with income mm -hmm. in a tough economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we want to provide discounts for them. So we're having partnerships with sports leagues. We're going to make it easier for a dad to take their child to a, a ball game or bowling alleys to make it easier for a dad to take their child bowling. Uh, we want the public housing residents uh, to participate and take advantage of all those opportunities all throughout the year. And so we look forward to working with you on that. This is, this is great. Um, public housing authorities, I want to be the conduit to the resources that Michael just talked about. So if you have ideas about where you want to go and things you want to do, send them to us. I'll share them with you. I'll share them with Joshua Dubois, and we'll see what we can do. So I want to thank you very much. This has been great, and look forward to a long partnership with you. Well, Ron, you're a, you're a terrific leader, and uh, I'm really proud to have you uh, as a part of this effort. Uh, working together, we're going to get a lot done. Great. Thank you. Thank you.